Okay, so coming to the mutual coupling between two antennas. Okay, so this is another major application of CEM. Right? So what have we the sort of let's uh, look at what we have done so far. So we had one antenna like this. Let's call it antenna A. Okay, and what was this antenna A doing? It was radiating uh, a field in free space. So, and the input impedance that I calculated was assuming, I mean what are the boundary conditions that we applied over here? To solve this problem, what was the boundary condition? We said that E z i r plus E z scattered at r is going to be equal to what? 0, right? for R belonging to A in the conductor, it is a perfect conductor, the total field is 0. Right? Now what happens if there is some other object in the vicinity of this antenna? That object will also get, have some current induced, uh, I mean the field will fall on, it, fall on it, induce some current, that induced current in turn will radiate another field, that field will come and fall on this antenna. So this boundary condition will not be strictly true because there are more fields over here. If this boundary condition is not true, my solution changes, right? My, that means my current distribution changes. If the my current distribution changes, what happens to my impedance? It will change, right? So the input impedance that you have calculated for a single antenna in free space, you are very happy about it. You put it into an electromagnetic environment where there are various objects, and suddenly you find that your you know your uh, performance is not so good, right? So one major reason for that would be there is the since the environment around has changed the uh, input impedance of the antenna has changed therefore the matching condition is no longer valid so how do you calculate this so again there is a vast theory of approximate methods but again in cem what we'll try to do is give you an exact way of calculating this there's more it is more work but it's uh, uh, more rigorous than in the other case. So what we will do is now we will add another antenna element over here. Okay, So let us say there is one antenna radiating and I have introduced one more antenna in its vicinity. Okay. So another antenna comes in over here, we will call it antenna B. Okay. This antenna can be active or passive. So what is that, what does active antenna mean? That it is also radiating, that means it also has a generator. Passive antenna could be, it is just sort of in receiving mode or like a, one of these Yagi Uda antennas. There is one driving element and there are various rods behind it which are there, right. So that is an example of a passive element. So this situation is general over here. So how does this, uh, what will happen physically is this guy radiates a field, a current is induced on it, right and then that in turn will radiate another field. Okay. So there are two ways of thinking about it. One way is that uh, like a like a I mean like a series. A sends something to B, B induces, B radiates, sends to A, this changes the current in A and so on back and forth, right? It will not continue forever. There will be some steady state solution to this. Okay. So in the steady state there is going to be some current in A and some current in B. Right? So how will this boundary condition get modified? Then if I ask you what are the fields at any point on A, so you will have E z i, okay. that is always there, that is the, gen, the voltage, I mean the field produced by the voltage source. Then you have the self field, right. So, so far this is what I had in the single antenna case. Now, right, so now there is going to be a plus E z s for scattered, right. So, the field scattered by antenna B right. So, this was single antenna and this is both antennas. So in terms of a circuit model, how can I think of this? So actually a very simple two port network also 
drives home this picture very well, right. Uh, remember in our earlier case I had the generator and one load connected across it, right. Now that situation has changed a little bit, I have something like this. So, V1 and I1 goes in over here, V2 and I2 appear over here, right. So, this is I mean for electrical engineers this is very standard. So, what I can write V1 is equal to Z11 I1, Z12 I2 and V2 is going to be Z21 I1 plus Z22 I2. So, what are these Z11 and Z22? These will be called the self impedance, right. So, these are the impedances in the absence of the other antennas. This is what we had so far when there was a single antenna, nothing else to disturb it. And then Z21, Z12, these are called the mutual impedances. Uh, from a circuit, from an antenna or a circuit designer's point of view, what is the, what is the impedance that he or she needs to match? Is it Z11, Z22 or what? It is neither Z11 nor Z12, Z in right. So, that is V1 by I1 at port 1 that is the impedance right. So, that is going to be Z 1 D I will tell you what D stands for and that is going to be equal to Z 1 1 plus Z 1 2 I 2 by I 1 and this Z 1 T is called the driving point impedance. Similarly, V2 by I2 will be the Z2D which will be Z21 I1 by I2 plus Z22, okay. So, you can see that the driving point impedance depends on knowing I1 and I2. I need to know what these currents are, only then I can find out what is the uh, matching network to design, right. So, Again, how do we calculate this? So, again this uh, method which is called the induced uh, EMF method and various other methods they are used to approximate, if I can get an approximation of the current distribution then I can calculate this driving point impedance and all of that, right. And that, that works for uh, very special cases of you know parallel, uh, parallel conductors only Z directed and so on. But if you have some general configuration it is, uh, it is not uh, accurate. So, CEM again allows us to calculate these exactly. Okay. So, is the, the setup is clear? Af when I have two antennas in the presence of each other, there is going to be um, you know some current I A over here and some current I B over here. These are steady state currents. After all, the uh, reflect multiple reflections have happened. And our objective is that in the presence of I A, I mean in the presence of the other antenna, tell me what is Z one D, tell me what is Z two D. Okay. So let's proceed. So the boundary conditions that we have, uh, let's let's redraw this antenna over here. So this is antenna A. Okay. For simplicity what I am going to do is the antenna B I am just going to make it passive, okay. but I can easily add a generator to it. Okay. So, this is my antenna B and uh, there is I A here, I B over here, okay. some distance B apart. Now, since this is the very first introduction of CEM to mutual coupling, I need to make some simplifying assumptions. Uh, which is not uh, required, but it just to keep the derivation simple. So, the assumptions I will make are 
both are z directed so both currents are z directed and radius is much smaller than wavelength okay so this just allows the math to become a little bit easier is that okay so with a single antenna we'll keep comparing with the single antenna case and build the theory of two antennas to each other with the single antennas our boundary condition was ez ia so ia is incident uh, field for an element a r plus ez sa r is equal to 0 for r belonging to a okay and now we are going to for two antennas i need to find out the boundary conditions so very simply they will be so let's take two cases r belongs to a and r belongs to b okay so the first case what will i write ez i a r plus ez this is the self field and some field scattered field due to b being measured on a this must be equal to 0 right okay second boundary condition what will be the first term so there is going to be ez scattered from a right let's write it in a uh, in this way so this is the field that is produced due to current in a falling producing a field and that field falling on b and ez s b r is equal to equal to 0 okay for r belonging to b so we assumed b has no source if it has a source i there will be a ez ib that's all okay Great. very simple to deal with okay these two conditions there is a name for them they are called null boundary conditions so let's let's remind ourselves how we solved the single antenna problem so yeah why why would it be for no i'm just assuming if there was there will be one more term we will add it right there is absolutely no difficulty we can add like this this term over here right a similar term ez ibr will be added to the left hand side of this oh you can do it uh so i have some voltage source in a which is generating a field and that's the first term the second term is the field due to the current flowing in the antenna itself and the second term is the field due to the current in uh antenna b right now and this is true for any point on the antenna a when i move to antenna b the same logic holds so if there were a source in antenna b then i have to add the source term that's all is it clear so let me write it here else add ez ibr to lhs so that there is no confusion okay so let's remind ourselves how did we solve a uh, single antenna it was the pocklington's integral in, in equation right pocklington's integral equation and let me just write it down over here so minus la by 2 to la by 2 so there was a ia z prime then i had d2 by dz2 plus k squared acting on green's function which was a function of zz prime right and i had a dz prime and this whole thing was equal to 
by boundary condition this was equal to minus e z incident at z right this was our uh, very simple thing now this uh, this this character over here is going to appear many many times so i'm going to make a shorthand notation for it so this term over here i'm going to call it j omega epsilon not times k z z prime okay just a shorthand notation for this term so what happens now or oh, let me maybe i should write it over here so this will become integral from minus la by 2 to la by 2 then i a z prime k z z prime d z prime is equal to minus e i z z just a more compact way of writing the same equation and here what was my my g had what kind of terms it was e to the minus j k r by 4 pi r and r was of the form square root of a square plus z minus z prime squared we have already seen this before right so it's a function of z and z prime now we go to to bound to uh, the case of the integral equations for two elements right 